Restorative practice to me is the restoration through communication and understanding and diplomacy. What's up, boy? How was school today? Bringing chairs together, having individuals, student, teacher, parent, have a process that communicates every aspect that we need that child to understand of their education life. The discipline, planning, relationship building. We know statistically that girls of color, many of them are not graduating. And so the girls group's focus is to help them know and understand they can achieve what every other student can achieve. What the girls group has done is taken a group of fifth grade girls, um, reintroduced them to themselves and out into their community. We've had some great field trips, right? So that they can take interest in their community because we know if they take interest in their community, they're more apt to get involved. And we work on attendance, leadership skills, uh, social skills. I feel like I became more of a leader because I've been more helpful. I think it's good to have good attendance because you want to be a part of your class and you don't want to miss class because you won't get your work done. When we're in the girls group, you feel safe because we got to express ourselves and we got to like let our secrets out and tell everybody what we've been like worried about. I trust most of the staff here because they all listen. Being able to express your thoughts and share your secrets with other people gives you kind of a relief. I've been doing boys group here for around 20 years. And the first thought was they just had to have a voice because sometimes they felt that they weren't being heard. Sometimes it gets very heated, but they also know that that's that outlet, so if they have to do it right there, it's better to do it with your group versus in the classroom. He wrote something like very rude to the teacher, and then he said, and then he put my name on it while well, I got in big trouble. We talk, right? Yeah. Then we get a punishment. But the girls, they're back, they're talking. Mm -hmm. I need to change the, their temper when they get mad. It makes me feel like sad because they're just yelling mm -hmm. so loud. One boy like throws a pencil or something and the teacher says, oh, you did that and you did that and you did that when it was just one person. And then it leads up to like a group of boys getting in trouble. And if you feel mistreated, say how you felt if you were mistreated. And that's okay. They start like yelling at me, calling me names and stuff, and the teacher doesn't hear them, but then right when I say something, they wanna hear me and say that, oh, I did something, but then they don't hear anybody else do it. So if you could fix that, what would you ask the teacher to do differently? I would ask the teacher to always be around instead of looking at one person and not the other person too. If I was to tell you guys something or give you guys advice, you guys are saying when I do something, it's um, it's like instant in trouble. And when somebody else does something, it's kind of a slap on the wrist. Well, you guys got to ask yourself, how many times today did I do something wrong? And how many times today did that person do something wrong? And then you guys can work from there. It's not always about, you know, make, I think she likes somebody a little bit more or she don't like you. It's about how many chances she's gave you and how many chances she's gave them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sometimes as adults, we just think that, you know, you're just a kid, just deal with the consequence. But if there's an injustice, if we just let it go now, you'll always do that. And that's what I don't want to do. I want to be able to have a voice and speak for themselves. If you've done something, you need to be held accountable. And the, the, the consequence still might be there, but the outcome is now that person know how you felt and that next time they might be more willing to listen to you. Good job. What's up, Bill? You feel good? Sometimes discipline or restoration comes in inclusion, comes in communication, comes in feeling, comes in um, recognition of fault. So I like to use restorative practices as a tool for communication. So it kind of helps 
build that relationship for them that may not have been there in the beginning or just gives a student a tool to understand that this is a part of life that you have to communicate and recognize your issues. I've been told students listen to you because you are African American and you're a male. And I get offended by it. Because I want you to be able to tell me why you worked it out rather than telling me the bad stuff, why you was about to be suspended. No, look, I was about to be suspended, but talk to me about the good stuff. But watch this, I worked it out though. So I think it's more than me just being African American and a male. I think it's the consistency that they know that they can depend on me showing up. Because I'm always told, Mr. Jeremy, where were you? I was here, I was in the office. Oh, <laughs> so that is a form of me knowing that consistency for them, just even knowing that if I'm here today, helps them get through it. If we can't be naive to think that we don't bring our own biases into the classroom and you let that reflect onto them, how you feel, and if you're not showing the love and support that they need, they just won't grow, they won't grow. You know, the disproportionality and suspensions and special ed is, is I imagine it's changing, but um, those are the ones who still get brought up to sit teams. Those are the ones that if you go to middle school or high school, our young men or young ladies are still getting suspended at high rates. Um, just think about how you feel in that situation. When you lose your ambition to go to school, your drive to go to school because how you're being dealt with or how you're not being dealt with, or there's only a few people you feel safe in the building you can go to. Um, we really need to check ourselves. Anything, let them know you love them. And that you can generally concern for their health, welfare, and a safe quality education. If there is one thing that we could leave here with, if the auditorium full of teachers, what is something you would tell the teachers on ways to better work with boys of color? What we can do is try not to treat them as groups and more as individual, like they were saying. To not look at us different than other people. And not only focus on one person just because they always get in trouble or something, or you might think that they always get in trouble just because of their race or something. Make the consequences fair. Thank you. Treat pe people of color as they're humans, not as a thing. Thank you, sir.